What's going on, Lee Jim Beast and my fellow SaaSpreneurs? Matty Ice here, Leads for Locals. Got an important video for you today. We're going to be talking about how to pick a niche for your Go High Level Marketing Agency. This is a really important topic. I think a lot of people get stuck on this for way longer than they need to, but I totally get it. I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. I definitely had, uh, I was going back and forth between a few different niches that I want to go after uh, in the very beginning. So uh, I totally get it, but I'm hoping to provide some clarity. Uh, I've had a few requests for this, uh, which I really appreciate, guys. If you have certain requests for videos, uh, please send those to me. You know, comments on the on the videos down below. Uh, what other videos you want me to make? So really appreciate that. But I'm just going to break down my process for choosing a niche. I actually just went through this, and uh, I'm, I'm going to share my experience with the current niche that. Uh, you know, I've been with for the past few months, uh, it was my first SaaS product and how I landed on that niche. And it was, you know, it's been very successful. It's done really well. And, uh, but I'm also moving into another niche and I'm just going to, you know, I'm a SaaSpreneur now, right? So, uh, building multiple SaaS products and uh, I'm going to go through why I chose that niche. So make sure you stick to the end. Uh, hopefully this is going to give you some really good clarity. Um, my only ask as usual, if you find the video helpful, please smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Always have good uh, additional trainings for you guys there. Also want to mention that I'm going to be coming out um, almost done with my uh, my own SaaS, uh, SaaS agency course. Uh, it's going to take you from start to finish how to get to 10K a month, how to build that six-figure SaaS agency using Go High Level. So if you want to get on the waiting list for that when it's released, again, I'll have a link in the description. You can check that out. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's rock and roll. Uh, the first thing I want to say is there's no perfect niche, guys. It, it, we're going to go through some steps here for identifying the, uh, the like the kind of the ideal niche for you. But just know that there's no perfect niche. Uh, I, I don't want to say that uh, some are better than others, uh, but so, sometimes that is the case. But um, at the end of the day, you don't want to overcomplicate this. Like there's not going to be one perfect niche that you're going to land on. And here's the thing. You're not you don't have to marry the niche that that you initially choose, you know, stick with it for six to 12 months, really get some experience with it. That was kind of my goal with the first SaaS product that I launched called Elite Broker, uh, which I'm never getting rid of. Uh, but, you know, I am moving on to another niche, taking my experience with the uh, with the business loan industry, which is what Elite Brokers for, and I'm going to take that experience and build off of it and move into another niche with that uh, with that experience, right? So just know that there's no perfect niche. Uh, we're we're not selling you know two thousand three thousand dollars services here anymore. This is, I mean, I suppose you could, but uh, I focus primarily on SaaS now. I don't really do one on one client work anymore uh, because SaaS is just so much better, guys. And that's why uh, that's that's what my course is going to be focused on is uh, building a SaaS agency, not uh, not the traditional type of marketing agency. So um, we're not selling fifteen hundred, you know, two thousand, three thousand dollar services here. We're selling a SaaS product for one ninety seven a month, two ninety seven a month, something like that, with a sign up fee. It's not that expensive. So um, you know, we we don't have to go after. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go after like really high ticket service providers and things like that, that, that close, you know, $5,000, $10,000 deals uh, that, you know, it just makes more sense for them to pay those types of fees. You don't have to do that. So that's why I'm saying there's really no perfect niche with this. It really comes down to a few key things that you want to ask yourself or some key questions that you just want to walk through. And uh, actually, I should actually start um, here at the bottom uh, is uh, after you go through this process, you want to pick your top three that you're most interested in, uh, that you have the most experience in X, Y, Z. We're going to cover that in a second. But uh, what I did was I just wrote out the pros and cons because when I was uh, transitioning into SaaS mode uh, with Go High Level, uh, I wrote out three industries. I did uh, and I, I based it on these questions right here, guys. Uh, so I, I was looking at doing credit repair. I was looking at doing life insurance, I think it was. And then uh, business loans, right? And I wrote out the pros and cons for all of those. Uh, and I like there were so many more pros for the business loan industry based on these questions right here. Um, and that's what I landed on. That's what I've had uh, some really good success with so far. So um, the first question that you can ask yourself is what industry do you have experience in? Uh, and or at least have some interest in. Like, um, I, I don't want you to think you have to have experience in the in uh, in the industry that you choose, the niche that you choose. That's not the case. Uh, it does help though. Um, so you know, like, 
I have a lot of different parts of my agency. I've got courses that I sell. I do uh, coaching and stuff like that, but I have a lot, uh, decent amount of courses that are very industry specific. Um, so when I created, for example, the life insurance program that I put together uh, for lead generation, I used to be a life insurance agent. So it kind of made sense for me to put something together for that. Uh, same thing with business loans. When I first started uh, doing marketing, uh, with, you know, Facebook ads and messing around with funnels and stuff like that. One of my very first trial clients was in the business loan space and we got really good results for him. And it just kind of built off of that. So when, by the time I decided to switch over to SaaS mode, I already had a ton of experience marketing for the business loan industry that it just made sense. I, I understood the language, you know, we had a really good marketing system in place. So think about the different types of industries that you already have experience in. And it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be that you've done marketing in that industry. Uh, Cause you know, you, you know, if you're just getting started, then obviously you'd have no experience marketing in that particular industry. You want to get some, uh, some results for people do trial and error, things like that. But uh, the more you understand the industry that you're building the product for uh, typically the better product you're going to be able to create, the better you're going to be able to close, et cetera. So start thinking about uh, some different industries you have experience in, or at the very least have some interest in, because if you choose a niche that you just can't stand, or you have no interest in doing research on, because uh, um, building a really good SaaS product, which is one of the key parts of the course that I'm putting together is building an awesome SaaS product for the niche that you're going after. That is really, in my opinion, the key to success with this type of business, with, with, when you're running a SaaS agency, you've got to have an awesome SaaS product. You don't want to offer just cookie cutter generic stuff. So that means you're going to have to dive into the industry, really learn the language, learn the language of the prospects of your prospects, right? Because uh, a lot of the marketing that you do is centered around their audience, getting them to respond to your client's marketing, uh, getting them into their funnels, et cetera. So you've got to have some interest in it. Who do you enjoy working with uh, the most as well? Uh, you might be able to answer this a little bit more as you get some experience uh, with your marketing agency. You're going to be able to determine, all right, you know, this is a, a kind of just based on the conversations and the interactions I've had with these people. I, I kind of work I like working with these people a little bit better, right? Because uh, obviously you don't want to, you know, be pulling your your hair out every time uh, you have to deal with one of your clients. So if you can't, if you're not enjoying the industry that you're in, you're going to have a hard time building a successful agency out of that. So, um, you know, think about who you enjoy working with the most. Uh, that was one of the questions I asked when I was uh, deciding which niche I wanted to do for my SaaS agency. And I really enjoyed working with uh, business loan brokers. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy working with all different kinds of people, but uh, I definitely enjoy working with business loan brokers. And so it just, again, it was one of those things that I was able to check off that, uh, you know, it made sense to go with that industry. Who needs help with getting more customers and clients? If there is, you know, like some industry, like all businesses want customers and clients, but I do find that some industries tend to be a lot more aggressive about it, uh, about their marketing, especially like uh, when it comes to high ticket services, uh, professional services, like, you know, life insurance agents, credit repair agents, people that are uh, selling over the phone, business loan brokers, financial advisors, things like that. Uh, people that sell like higher ticket stuff or they're selling over the phone uh, tend to be just in my experience, uh, a, a bit more aggressive with their, their marketing. That's not always the case, but uh, you know, when you're thinking about the different industries that you have experience in, that you have interest in, um, who do you think, you know, has a higher demand for, uh, for getting more leads, more customers, et cetera. Also look at the competition. This was another th reason uh, I landed on the business loan industry because there was literally like nothing, like nothing even close to what I put together with elite broker. So it's just like an absolute no brainer for, for people to sign up to it and use it. So uh, what is the competition like to start doing research? Um, I, this is actually something I just did. Uh, or I was doing when I was deciding the next niche that I want to go into, which is going to be financial advisors. And uh, when I was doing my research, there's not that much, it, it, at least not compared to what I'm envisioning that my next SaaS product to be. It's just, it's not, there's just not going to be any competition compared to what I have uh, that, that I'm going to be able to put together. And now here's the flip side of that is um, it's okay if there's competition in your industry, right? I mean, 
you know, there are millions and millions of business owners across the country. There's, you know, tens of thousands of business owners in your specific niche that you choose, most likely. Uh, some are going to be a little bit smaller, some a little bit bigger, whatever. But you don't need to get the entire pie. Like you just need a small slice of the pie. Now, I'm not saying don't think big and don't go after the whole pie. What I'm saying is you only need 100, 200 clients to make life changing money, guys. Like if you're charging 297 a month and you get 100 clients and let's say there's the potential for 10,000 clients, like, do we really need to get all 10,000 clients? And like, we're not going to go after that industry just because there's competition in it that has a bigger piece of the pie than we do. Absolutely not. Because uh, what the one of the advantages that we have as go high level marketing agencies and uh, Sean Clark has, has spoken about this quite a bit is uh, the, like these bigger like competitors, they uh, they're, they're typically pretty generic. They, they can't, they can't um, narrow in on uh, and hone in on the niche like like we can. So we have a, kind of an advantage when it comes to that. So don't worry too much about competition. You just you don't want to be swamped uh, like gyms and chiropractors. They're probably uh, maybe a little swamped. I don't I don't know anything about those industries, but do your research. You know, uh, see what uh, see what your competitors have put together, and you know, use that maybe as a base, and just keep building on it, improving. Uh, at the end of the day, as long as you are making the absolute best SaaS product that you can, you're going to get customers, guys, uh, because businesses need what we put together with this, right? They 100% they need it. And uh, not to mention, you know, we're not charging an arm and a leg for this. 197 a month, 297 a month. It's not that crazy. So um, do some research on your competition. It's actually good to see a little bit of competition, too. Um, because, you know, that shows that there is a viable business there. But uh, even if there's not, there's still like, you know, a lot of these types of businesses, they need more customers. So when you put something together that's going to help them do that, they're going to pay for it. And uh, just re just remember, you only need 100, 200 clients to, to make really, really good money with this, guys. Uh, also, do you already have a list that you can tap into? So again, by the time I was moving over to SaaS, I had a pretty decent list uh, in very specific industries. And uh, that's why I listed out credit repair. I, I believe it was life insurance. Actually, it may have been uh, hair salons because that's uh, I used to be a, hair, a barber and hairdresser. I did that for eight years. And I know <coughs> salons are always looking for new ways to bring in uh, it, like grow their clientele. But I didn't have a list. You know, it doesn't mean I can't do that niche. But again, when you're getting started with this, you want to pick the best one that's going to get you the, the results the fastest. And I had a massive list of credit repair agents and business loan brokers. So again, business loans, it just made sense. I got the list. Uh, I enjoy working with them. I have experience in the marketing. I already have the marketing system. Uh, they absolutely want uh, more leads, more clients. So I'm just checking off boxes here. So um, let's go through a couple of examples. And I mean, you could get a list of different industries. I mean, just do a Google search. Uh, but the other thing you could do is go into go high level, go through the marketplace and uh, see what type of funnels and stuff that you can buy that are already pre-made. So you don't have to build stuff from scratch. Uh, I, you know, uh, it gives you a good base to work with. You are going to have to build a lot of stuff from scratch uh, if you're going to really cater your SaaS product to a specific niche. But getting assets that are already pre-built, that could kind of give you a head start. So you can see what's inside the marketplace. All these businesses need more customers, guys. Like I just put a few examples here. Uh, I'm going to be going into financial services and, and you know, I'm focusing on a, a, a part of the financial services industry, uh, you know, a very specific type of financial advisor. And uh, there's all different types of sub niches within financial services. But, you know, when you start checking off these boxes, uh, you know, you start to get a little bit more clarity on who you want to focus on. So these are just a few examples, you know, don't, again, the, the, I wouldn't say that any of these are really better than another. Uh, one thing I will say is if you can, which most of these here, uh, not all of them, but most of the, most of these industries right here uh, require some type of licensing or they rent out, you know, a, a pretty large space in order to run their business. So they're committed. To their business. Um, you don't want to focus on an industry where it's very easy for people to, to quit and move on to another business. Um, it's uh, like you, you want people that are actually committed to what they're doing, because 
uh, you know, if they don't get results with your SaaS product in the first 30, 60 days, or whatever, you don't want people quitting and then moving on to another business, right? It, it's just getting, it's not really worth your time. So, uh, I mean, most of these are like, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, I mean, you got to go through a lot of school to become a dentist. It takes a lot of money to open a restaurant. Chiropractors have to go through all kinds of licensing and education. Same thing with salons, mortgage brokers, et cetera. So hopefully that a little bit more clarity there. All right. And yeah, so pick your top three, write out the pros and cons, and then just make a decision, guys. Don't get analysis paralysis. Like I said, you're not married to this niche, but what you're going to find is that, uh, you know, you, you might knock it out of the park with your first SaaS product. Just um, focus on getting the experience first, building a really, really good SaaS product, put some awesome automations in there, awesome follow-up sequences, you know, create some awesome funnels and websites for people, you know, uh, really good training area, stuff like that. And uh, you're, you're going to gain so much experience in those six to 12 months. Trust me. Okay. And uh, you can take that experience and then move on to another niche later on if you want. But try to, you know, focus on getting your first 10, 20, 30, maybe 50 clients with, uh, with your SaaS product and then, and then reevaluate, all right? Uh, at that point, you've got some really good experience. You have some good money coming in and you can make a decision on whether you want to pivot to another industry or double down on, on the one that you're in, right? Uh, but at some point, you've got to make a decision, guys. Don't, uh, don't worry about like, oh, am I picking the right niche uh, at some point? You know, after you've checked off those boxes, written out the pros and cons, make a decision and move forward. All right. And uh, make sure you check out my course. So uh, anyways, guys, that is long enough for this video. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarity. Let me know what you guys think. Drop some feedback in the comments. And uh, also, if you have requests for other videos or any other questions, uh, anything that you're stuck on, let me know what that is in the comments and I'll, I'll keep making videos for you guys. I, I love doing this stuff. I'm not going anywhere. So uh, anyways, guys, hope you are crushing it. Uh, hope to see you in the course uh, when it is launched. Make sure you get on the wait list. Uh, link in the description and I will talk to you in the next one. Matty Ice is out. Peace.